All right, hello guys. In this video, we're gonna be talking about a little bit of the upcoming pattern as well as a lot of the precipitation that you could expect for the southeastern United States as well as a pattern that's coming up that could really set things up to be quite favorable for some nor'easters actually for the eastern United States. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias, especially the Instagram, which I'll link in the comments. We're doing a lot of uh, viewer sent in photos and stuff like that. So if you are into weather photography, that'd be super, super cool for you to be able to share your stuff with us. Anyway, let's get right into it. So we're looking at our 500 millibar geopotential height here. And this is for Saturday, the 19th of October. So this is quite a bit out. This is, you know, over 10 days out. Uh, the interesting thing is our pattern looks to get colder and colder in the east as we approach the 20th. So as we head towards the 20th, it's going to get even colder and colder and colder and colder. And we're going to get more and more into that, you know, almost like a late fall or early winter type pattern for a lot of areas in the northeast, north central United States, central United States. It's going to feel a lot like early winter or, you know, November time frame type temperatures. Now, this pattern is really the first ingredient to a pattern that would allow for nor'easters to take place along the east coast of the United States. We need that trough in place to allow those low pressure systems to ride up the east coast. Uh, and also another thing we need is precipitable water. We need low pressure systems and precipitable water to help intensify those low pressure systems. Now you can see the wind is headed in a northeasterly direction by those wind arrows there at pretty fast speeds there by that low pressure system at this time frame. This is again Saturday the 19th of October and we have a lot of those above average precipitable water regions along the east coast of the United States indicated by those greens. So it's very very good pattern around the 20th of October or before the 20th of October but right around that time frame for nor'easters to potentially begin taking place. And it'd be very interesting if we started to see a lot of nor'easters in the fall time, because that'd be a really good indicator that we could potentially see more and more of those as we head into winter, which would obviously mean very, very big snowstorms for the East Coast of the United States by the time we're talking December, January, February, March. So that, that would be a really good sign for the winter time. Now, we're also going to talk about how we can go from model runs looking like this. This is the GFS run from September 28th, and this was valid through October 5th. You can see almost no precipitation there for the southeast and hardly any for the east coast of the United States. To having a model run that looks like this for the 5th of October through the 21st of October, where in those blues, you can see that's half an inch plus. And then in the pink sets, two inches plus. So we're going to go from having below average precipitation in the east to having above average precipitation in the east as this pattern switches. So we're going to take a look at a little bit of the precipitation type maps here from the GFS throughout this 60 run that came out this morning. Uh, and I wanted to show you here, this is only in 24 hours, so we're talking Sunday early morning time here. You can see there is some showers and thunderstorms occurring there for the southeastern United States across Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and Tennessee. Now, also for the north central United States, but they're a little less intense up there. Uh, but by the time we're at 60 hours out, after all those showers are said and done, we have a big time cold front heading through. You can see from the Gulf Coast all the way up through Maine, we have a lot of precipitation falling along this frontal boundary here, and it's pretty intense. So we're going to have a lot of these as we get troughs to move into the east. You see, this is the thing. We had a lack of troughs heading into the eastern United States and a lack of cold air, and that also means a lack of cold fronts. There weren't really any cold fronts, which could also lead to below average precipitation, and that's the kind of trio that we saw take place. Now we're going to start seeing cold air move in, cold fronts move in, which means frontal boundaries moving in, which means above average precipitation potentially, and in this case it looks like that will be the case. Now, we're also going to take a look at October 7th. That was October, or sorry, this was October 7th where I showed that frontal boundary. We're going to take a look at October 9th here. And you can see along the east coast of the United States, we have some sort of nor'easter system there well offshore. So already by the 9th, Wednesday the 9th of October, we do have nor'easter type systems trying to take place. This one happens to be well too offshore, but with 100 and eight hours to go by uh, and you know multiple model runs we could see this one trend back west doesn't look like it'll be the case so we're probably just gonna have maybe some isolated showers along the coast with this one but i just wanted to show that we do have the potential for a lot of coastal systems here 
Looking at Thursday, October 10th, you can see we have another big time frontal boundary there with a low pressure system along it. And we have heavy snow and rain there, you know, rain on the east side of it, snow on the west side of it. Uh, for Minnesota, the Dakotas, Iowa, all of those regions are receiving a lot of precipitation by that point. And notice our nor'easter over there looking quite intense. Uh, a 1,001 millibar low pressure system, which isn't too crazy for a nor'easter, but if that one was on shore, we would be talking about a major story, and that would be the highlight of this video. I would probably make, be making a video just about that if that one was on shore, so we'll have to watch that one around the 10th and see if this one trends back west. We could be talking about you know a major nor'easter, or as far as precipitation at least, for the northeastern United States. As you can see, by Friday, October 11th, we see that frontal boundary move even further east. We're seeing showers and maybe some thunderstorms along it in some regions, uh, up and down, for, again, from the Gulf all the way up to the Great Lakes regions. And you can see just how big that trough is to its northwest. We see a lot of snow there from Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, uh, and then just extreme cold air. We're going to talk about that cold air at the end of the video, and I made a video, I think either yesterday or the day before, about that cold air, so you can check that one out as well if you are curious as to you know how cold it's going to be and the timing of everything, but this is the 11th of October, and we have very cold temperatures there for the central north United States, and again, that frontal boundary heading in. By the 12th, it reaches the coast. It's kind of you know not as strong by this point, but we do see some showers along the east coast there from the southeast all the way up again through New England and into the mid-Atlantic. So we do see a lot of precipitation. And notice we do have a low pressure system and very cold temperatures over the Great Lakes there, potentially being lake enhanced. We're going to have to talk about this one as we get closer if it verifies uh, that we might have some lake effect type snow trying to take place here already for Wisconsin, Michigan, areas like that. Now, this is Tuesday, October 15th, and I just wanted to show that we do, by this point, have some precipitation for the central United States, and we do have a pretty decent trough there for the New England states as well, uh, a little bit of a ridge there for the central United States by this point, but not a lot going on by this time, and we do have a high-pressure system setting up in the northeastern United States, not one of the ones that brings a lot of hot temperatures, though, like we have been seeing, so this isn't necessarily bad news. This would bring, uh, you know colder temperatures, but really going to be uh, quite clear. You know, you can expect some clear sky days with uh, 1,029 millibar high pressure system there. By the 16th, though, we already see another low pressure system moving in, bringing very, very heavy precipitation to the Gulf and, you know, some of those interior eastern states. And this is over 200 hours out, so I don't want you guys to think that this is by any means going to happen for sure the way that you see it here. When we're, this, when we're talking this far out, I look for trends. If I see multiple nor'easters over 200 hours out, that's notable. You know, I'm not going to say there's going to be a nor'easter on the 15th exactly, but I will say I saw five nor'easters after the 10th. So, you know, the chances of one of those happening goes up significantly if you have five, you know, so it's kind of just trends are important at this range. So we do see a lot of precipitation and that's kind of the trend that we're seeing here. By Friday, October 18th, again, precipitation along the East Coast. And here is where we see maybe a low pressure system, uh, a little bit of a low pressure system there offshore of Massachusetts and one maybe even offshore of South Carolina and North Carolina. Very, very weak low pressure systems here. But these are nor'easter type systems that are trying to take place here. And again, this is a type of trend thing because I'm not saying that on Friday the 18th of October, we're going to be seeing, you know, this much precipitation along the East Coast. But there is, you know, a certain percent chance that we will be having nor'easters along the coast. And what that percentage is, well, it varies. So that's the challenge. But uh, as of right now, we do see the chance for nor'easters again here by Sunday, October 20th. Another, this one's a little bit bigger actually here, but we have one just to the north of it too. But just offshore of South Carolina and North Carolina, we have a 1002 millibar low pressure system nor'easter trying to take place here and head up the coast eventually. That one's a little bit stronger as well. Very, very interesting pattern. Now, again, just to re reiterate and just to show you once more, here's our precipitation through the end of the run on this GFS model run. This could change a lot, but we see a significant amount of precipitation in the eastern United States and with the exception of the Pacific Northwest and Northwestern United States, not a lot happening out west, which is like complete opposite of what we've been dealing with for maybe about a month now, maybe like 
you could maybe even argue that the entire month of September was quiet for the eastern United States. So we're switching that up big time here. Uh, and just to show you guys, here's our temperature anomalies here for October 17th. Just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of the cold we're going to be talking about. This is a seven-day temperature outlook. So this is from the 12th through the 17th what the GFS is calling for. Those dark blues, we're talking four to eight degrees below average Celsius. So you're talking, you know, over 10 degrees below average Fahrenheit for a lot of those darker blue regions. It would be the biggest cooldown we've had so far this season, and it would be a long time. So the teleconnections look to be in really good shape. Again, I have videos on that. I don't want to get too much into that technical stuff because people don't really understand it. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Share it with your friends and family, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, or any other sorts of social medias. And I always appreciate the support and you guys always trying to share the videos. I see that a lot of my views do come from Facebook, so that means that people are sharing it. But I just wanted to remind you that if you did enjoy the content and you think that your friends would find it useful, feel free to share it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.